Hi, I'm Dr. Raymond Douglas. I'm an Occupalastic and Orbital Surgeon from Beverly Hills, California, and today we're here with Pejman Cohen. He's an endocrinologist here in Beverly Hills, and we're talking about Graves' disease. And this segment, we're talking about antibodies, because that is the bane of every Occupalastic surgeon's uh, existence when someone presents with all these antibodies and we don't know what to do with them or what to make of them. And I know the patients are equally as frustrated by the uh, alphabet soup of these mm -hmm. names and abbreviations. And so I'd like to make a little bit of sense of those antibody levels. Uh, what are they? Uh, you know, they're very similar to a vaccination where we make antibodies from our B cells. That, um, but these antibodies are made very specifically to receptors and other things in our body. And so Dr. Cohen is going to explain a little bit about what these antibodies mean in relation to autoimmune thyroid disease and specifically Graves' disease. And thank you so much for helping to put some clarity to this. Absolutely, yes. The antibodies uh, are important diagnostic tools and they're important for us to be certain that the thyroid condition is immune related or not because although the majority of thyroid problems are autoimmune, there are some that are not. Like some, some patients have, for example, a nodule that could be releasing extra levels of thyroid hormone and that condition, of course, is not an autoimmune problem, uh, and, and therefore, you know, these antibodies are not going to be useful in that patient. And some people, for example, have thyroid cancer, which, you know, as far as we know, is not an autoimmune problem, and, and it's not really useful, these tests, for in that population of patients. But antibodies are very useful in people who have an underactive thyroid or overactive thyroid, namely Hashimoto's and Graves' disease. And to make this as simple as possible, we're just going to talk about four different antibodies. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the two antibodies that we generally see in Hashimoto's disease, this is the underactive thyroid condition, are called thyroid peroxidase antibody and thyroglobulin antibody. And these are antibodies against the enzymatic machinery of the thyroid and some of the proteins within the thyroid gland. So again, uh, thyroglobulin antibody and thyroid peroxidase antibody. Uh, we like to use you know, acronyms, so thyroid peroxidase antibody is sometimes called anti-TPO, and thyroglobulin antibody is sometimes referred to as anti-TG antibody. So those are the two antibodies that are generally seen in Hashimoto's disease. Now, to make things um, a, a little bit complicated, we sometimes see these antibodies also in Graves' disease. Right. So we think about these first two antibodies that I mentioned as general markers of thyroid autoimmunity, and they are predominantly seen in Hashimoto's, but can also be seen in some patients with Graves' disease. The other two antibodies are exclusively seen in Graves' disease, and this is TSH, uh, receptor antibody, sometimes referred to as thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, and the other one uh, called thyrotropin binding inhibitory uh, immunoglobulin, abbreviated as TBII. So TSI and TBII are antibodies that are directed against the receptor of the thyroid gland that then stimulates the thyroid gland to overproduce thyroid hormone. So again, the, these are the specific antibodies seen in Graves' disease. Uh, and, um, and again, patients with Graves' disease can have the other antibodies as well, but if they have those, you can be pretty much assured that they have Graves' disease. Mm -hmm. Now, to make things a little bit more complicated is that not everybody with an autoimmune thyroid problem will have these antibodies. The majority of the patients will, but there are some people in whom, even though that there's an autoimmune process, we just can't measure these in the bloodstream. Yeah, and these antibodies can last for quite a long period of time. I often describe it as a vaccination because you'll be able to measure these antibodies some, you know, for months or years after the onset of the disease. Do you measure these antibodies over a long period of time? And if so, what do they mean to you, you know, as you may follow a patient over the course of their disease? Yes, this is a, this is a very important question because oftentimes patients uh, who have positive antibodies will want to track these antibodies. And, yeah. and oftentimes uh, I have to kind of, uh, you know, reassure them that there is not a lot of utility in, in doing that. I can tell you some instances where the antibody testing is useful. Uh, for example, 
in another segment we talked about pregnancy and Graves disease and measuring those stimulatory antibodies as the pregnancy progresses is important because those antibodies if they're in high enough titers can cross the placenta and cause the fetus to become hyperthyroid. Mm -hmm. So that's one situation where it's really important to monitor the antibodies. Um, but aside from those specific situations, in most cases it doesn't really mean very much to track these antibodies over time. And you know, one of the reasons I tell patients is that although these antibodies are marker markers of the autoimmune disease, they don't always correlate with the disease severity. So sometimes we have patients who have very, very high titers of antibodies, but their thyroid function is not that abnormal. And some people have antibodies that are barely detectable, and they have really you know, abnormal thyroid hormone levels. So again, you know, patients oftentimes like to engage in lifestyle activities that um, reduce stress with the hope that it will lower their antibodies. And of course, I support that and endorse that 100%, but I just tell them not to be discouraged if those antibodies don't decline because they, you know, to a large degree we don't have control over that. Yeah. And in regards to the eye disease, the situation is almost identical. Um, the antibodies can last for many years and that doesn't mean that their eye disease is active or that it's going to get worse or that it's predictive of anything that's going to happen. It only means that they've been fairly well vaccinated to one of these receptors or one of these um, proteins. And so I try to, to calm people down that, you know, it's, they don't need to, to go through a very expensive antibody test every few weeks hoping that it's going to get better because really what we look for is the, the clinical picture, everything taken together, how they're feeling, how they're doing, how their laboratory function testing is, is coming along. But, and certainly as far as the eye disease, the real thing is their function, their clinical improvement or deterioration that helps to guide further probing onto these things. Well, thank you for making a very difficult subject much more clear. <laughs> My pleasure.